Does your home assistant entities look as long as the Bible? And do you have more smart devices than friends? Well, you may want to consider your scaling strategy. Now, I'm relatively new to automation, but I do know a thing or three about software engineering. So let's see if there's any overlap that can help. In software engineering, scalability refers to the ability to grow or shrink a resource. For example, the most common scalability use case is like a website's ability to handle large amounts of traffic. However, in my humble opinion, the core principle of scalability can be applied to almost any man-made thing that grows in complexity. Now, there are two common types of scaling, vertical and horizontal. So imagine if you had a one-story building that can hold up to about 50 people, and more people start coming to your building and you realize that you need to expand. Horizontal scaling would be you constructing a brand new building that could handle additional traffic. Well, now you own two buildings and you can service double the capacity. You also didn't have to shut down your existing building in order to meet this new demand, but it did cost a lot more money since you did have to acquire new land and build a brand new structure. Now, vertical scaling would be if you decided to build a second story on top of your existing building. Doing this required a lot less space, it cost a lot less than horizontal at the very least, um, but you do have limits as to how high you can build. And every time you build, you have to shut down the building in order to complete construction. Now, replace the building for a server, and this is scaling in the oversimplified nutshell. So what does scaling have to do with Home Assistant though? <laughs> Not entirely sure since I'm new to the space, but my gut tells me that there's probably some connection. So let's think about it a little and see what we come up with and you can leave comments to tell me what you think. So horizontal scaling would be us adding physical resources to expand our capabilities. So this seems a bit similar to us adding new devices like smart switches, motion sensors, lights, cameras, etc. This seems to hold up since adding these peripherals typically cost more money and they do take up some physical space uh, and typically it doesn't affect your existing system negatively. Uh, this seems like a crude comparison, but I think it kind of holds. Um, but what about vertical scaling? With vertical scaling, we would increase the ability of our system by increasing our virtual resources, which seems a bit similar to installing integrations or adding more blueprints, scripts, so on and so forth. And again, this seems like a crude analogy, but I think it's kind of painting a picture and I'm liking where this is going. You're probably thinking now, oh, so what? Right, so what? We add more devices, more integrations. What does scalability matter in this case? Well, I think there's about four things that matter or four areas that we can look at that matters. Cost, space, hard and soft complexity, and the ability to do more. Now, as a quick side note, I made up the phrase hard and soft complexity to describe the complexities uh, created by physical hardware, which is kind of hard complexity, versus soft complexity, which comes from, let's say, code and virtual implementations. Uh, under most situations, it's better to increase soft complexity over hard complexity, as these typically are cheaper to fix, quicker to diagnose, requires less physical space and setup, and is just easier in general to deal with. This is my humble opinion, and I do acknowledge that there may be people out there who find maybe the hard complexity is easier. I think you're wrong, but you know, we could still be friends. Anyways, before we start, uh, can you do me a favor and not click the subscribe button? Right, the other day I put out some video content talking about like what I liked about home automation and I went from like five subscribers to like 300. Now I feel compelled to bring quality content and like who wants that? Mm. Anyways, to get a better understanding, I think it may be helpful to set a baseline, so I will use myself as an example. When I started the home automation journey, or when I started my home automation journey, uh, I had the following devices. A ring contact sensor on all the windows and external doors, a ring motion sensor in the master bedroom, a ring doorbell, uh, I have Google devices in all the rooms, and smart light bulbs in all of the bedrooms. Okay, so with this context, let's begin. So under horizontal scaling, I can purchase additional sensors and other peripherals that allows me to get a more precise experience. For example, if I wanted to automatically turn on the lights in the master bedroom, I could additionally purchase a light sensor so that when the motion detector tripped uh, and there's low ambient light, the smart bulbs would turn on for a while. 
but this only works if I'm entering and exiting a space. If I wanted the lights to stay on while I'm present in the room, then I would have to purchase a millimeter wave sensor. And between these three sensors, I could probably handle just about any scenario with precision. However, getting this dialed in experience had the following effect. It costs money purchasing these two additional peripherals, and though their size are negligible, it does take up space and requires maintenance, like monitoring and changing the batteries. And though the soft complexity stays relatively simple, the hard complexity increases because now we went from two points of failures, which was just the original motion sensor and smart bulb, to four points of failures. However, with this cost, space, and complexity increase, your ability to do more is like top tier. Now let's contrast this with vertical scaling. With only a smart bulb and a ring motion sensor, I would have to rely on additional integrations like the sun integration to determine if it's sunset or if the sun is below the horizon. And out of the box, I would be able to handle the case where I leave and enter a room frequently. Uh, but if I were to stay inside the room for long periods of time, like for reading or sleeping or whatever the case may be, um, I would need to increase the complexity of the system by implementing like a light warning system that would let me know or that would dim so it'll let me know that the lights are about to turn off and that the sensor hasn't noticed me yet for a while. With vertical scaling, the cost was free and it did not require me to purchase any new peripherals. There was no change in physical or space requirements and there was no change in hard complexity, though soft complexity did increase a bit and I was able to more or less achieve similar results to when we scaled horizontally. However, the user experience is not as smooth and seamless as it was with horizontal scaling. With vertical scaling, there'll be situations and times when it's dark out Outside, like for instance a cloudy day and the lights won't turn on because it's not sunset right there's also the issue where now we would have to do like the real life version of jiggling the mouse just to keep the lights on so to oversimplify horizontal scaling costs more requires more space and is more complex but it allows us to have a fantastic near perfect user experience vertical scaling is vastly cheaper requires little to no additional space generally lower in complexity but you can expect more awkward experiences and and in some cases, you probably won't be able to achieve what you're looking for at all, as you may not have the minimal amount of peripherals needed to actually do what you're looking for. So which one should you choose? Look, I'm not your daddy. You saw the pros and cons, figure it out. Okay, bye. <laughs>